So today's video is about Florida and if I had to move here again I probably would not move to Florida. So basically I bought a house here in 2004 and I think I moved here full time around 2008 so I've been here for a while and for me that's enough time to really experience the changes in Florida and if I had to do it again today I probably would not move to Florida and stay till the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you where I would move to basically and I, I talk to a lot of people I'm a home inspector as everybody knows and I hang out with realtors and I'm in the real estate business and I learned a lot from talking to people coming and going and we have what's called you know boomerang buyers they move here down to Florida and then they realize it's not for them and they move back or we have what's called halfbacks so they move down to Florida say from the Northeast but then when they move back they move to a state like Car the Carolinas halfway back so today's video what I'm going to talk about is the top 10 reasons if I had to do it again in 2024 why I would not pick Florida and I will tell you the state at the end of the video that I would move to that I've done a lot of research into and I think it's probably the best bet right now so let's get started in the meantime do me a favor if you like this kind of content consider subscribing it really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated so the first thing here's the first one and they're not in any particular order okay so these are the ones that really really have a lot of people have done pros and cons including me about pros of living in Florida and the cons of living in Florida but this basically is for 2024 because I've seen the changes and the first thing that I don't like about Florida anymore and it's really getting to me is traffic and when I moved here yes there was a little bit of traffic especially on the I-4 going between Tampa and Orlando in this particular area but now it feels constant even on the side streets even on the local roads it's just traffic so everybody says well in the winter traffic is a lot worse because you have all the snowbirds down here but now it's not only in it's not only in the uh, winter but it's also in the summer literally just five six years ago some places where if I was going to say Walmart or Target down the street it would take me five minutes now I'm not exaggerating it probably takes me double the time ten minutes it doesn't sound like a long time but everything seems like just traffic and it, a lot of people and there's accidents all the time and I don't understand it it's, it's not like there's snow here or anything or the rain it's just every time we turn around and go down a certain street there's an accident I just don't know if it's just because of congestions or they never planned for the roads to handle this much traffic you know and where I live they're just building over and over and over again to a point that it's like come on you know there's there's not enough roads the roads aren't wide enough to handle the traffic and it's a big big pet peeve of mine because it takes forever to get anywhere and when I lived in New York I was used to traffic I grew up on Long Island you know the Meadowbrook Southern State Long Island Express right all that stuff I knew I was gonna hit traffic especially at particular times of day but I moved to Florida to kind of get away from traffic and what's happening it's getting just as bad as New York so traffic is one of my big pet peeves that if I knew how bad traffic was gonna go I at least if I still move to Florida I would move to a location that doesn't have as much traffic but I'm afraid no matter where you move in Florida eventually there's gonna be a lot of traffic because they just I feel like when they give out permits to build in certain areas they don't take that into consideration of all the congestion and the accidents and all, every day I hear about somebody on a motorcycle getting killed or an accident or a pedestrian getting killed they really have to come up with a better solution so that's my first pet peeve why I wouldn't move to Florida here here's another one that it, it affects me but it doesn't affect me but it affects my family members too like even my kids and stuff 
the wages here in Florida aren't keeping up with just the cost of living groceries don't forget Florida has the highest inflation in I think in every state like we have more inflation here than most states so it's really expensive here and the wages are just not keeping up so if you're trying to hire good talent you know and you, you can't find good talent because they're not moving here because the jobs aren't paying they're just not paying so and it's a very touristy area still and you know there's a lot of jobs in hospitality but with the cost of everything people aren't moving here you know in that sense for wages so I think that Florida one of the big problems with Florida is like yeah they bring in tech jobs there's a lot of doctors medical buildings um, stuff like that but I just feel that a lot of them aren't paying what we just have a, a, a good friend actually that makes I thought it was decent money but I guess in the profession that she's in she's saying no it's not I'll make more money in Tennessee than I will here so now you're losing a very talented person that is in the medical field because they just don't want to pay so that's basically number two very low wages yes if you're in hospitality but not everybody's in hospitality so that's that's a big big con about florida and i'm hoping that that'll change you know in the future here's number three okay and this should be at the top of the list but i, I like i said i'm not putting them in any particular order but high insurance cost homeowners insurance and car insurance and i'm not talking about like okay it's a little bit higher than national average. it's stupid um you know when people buy insurance for cars here in florida they don't say okay i'm paying three thousand dollars a year they don't even say that it's like how much you pay for car insurance oh i pay four hundred dollars a month it's like it's like a payment and it used to not be like that so basically, and homeowners insurance, probably since I moved here, it probably went up six, seven times the amount they used to pay. So when I first moved here, maybe the insurance was like 1800 and coming from New Hampshire, I was paying like 400 and I know it's, it's in the past, but now insurance for homes got so, so ridiculous that a lot of people without mortgages are going bare basically they're going without insurance so if there's a hurricane devastation they're not covered and it's not that they don't want to have insurance it's like do you really want to pay six to ten thousand dollars a year for homeowners insurance that's that's a ridiculous ridiculous amount of money and car insurance another ridiculous amount of money i'm talking about if if basically I knew what was going to happen to insurance you know when I left New Hampshire and I came to Florida I might have not moved here just for the insurance cost and now a lot of people are moving out of here just because of insurance they love everything else but just because they can't afford the insurance and the car insurance they're like you know what I'm out of here because you know the condos you know they're doing the special assessments because the condo associations are getting hit with these massive massive uh insurance increases that they have to pass it on to the owners and the owners are like i just don't have the money there's a breaking point so that's a big one for me that if i knew what was going to happen at the cost of car insurance and homeowners insurance just i would be like forget about it. let's find a place that's a little bit cheaper especially you know if I want to retire anytime soon here is one that I just don't understand the system okay the, the property taxes in Florida are not not cheap so some people are paying six eight ten thousand dollars a year fourteen thousand dollars a year it all depends on 
you know, how much you spend on the house. But this is the part that's ridiculous, I think, in Florida. So, say I bought this house a long time ago and I paid, at least a hypothetical number, say I paid 200000 okay? And let's say, since I paid 200000 because I'm a homesteader, it only could go up a certain percentage every year. So, say now I pay $2,500, okay, a year in property taxes. Now, let's say I sold this house, and let's say I sold it for the value of, say, $800,000. So now, I go buy another house that's equivalent, and whoever buys this house, they think that their taxes are going to be $2,500 because for some reason, when they advertise it, they're like, oh, the taxes are $2,500. They're not going to be, they're, it's going to be reassessed at $800,000 the value of the purchase or the value of the home at that price so now your taxes are going to go from twenty five hundred dollars to like say twelve thousand dollars and that's a big big jump is it good for the people that bought houses a long time ago yes i understand it is good for them but again it's the golden handcuffs like my house since the kids moved out you know because they're older is big but it doesn't pay for me to sell this house because of my taxes. I'm protected because I'm this house is homesteaded. And if I sold this house and bought another house and I paid six, seven hundred thousand, my taxes are gonna go up three, four times. And retirement, that doesn't really, really help. And if I wanna build, like I'm I'm saying, like another house that I wanna build on the water that I'm I'm trying to finish it up that house won't be a homestead because you can't homestead two places so that house i'm going to be paying twelve thousand probably ten to twelve thousand on property taxes and if i put full insurance on it it's going to be ten to twelve thousand so you're talking about twenty four thousand dollars a year just to own a home because it's not homestead even if it's homesteaded they would take off only a certain percentage so maybe the taxes will go down to nine grand but that means it's a lot more than I'm paying here. So if, if I knew how the property taxes work and I, that I'm gonna have the golden handcuffs and I can't sell my house, I probably wouldn't have moved to Florida for that reason either. And here, here's the thing right now is with these golden handcuffs, it's not just me having it, everybody's having it. So if I sold this house, I would be moving out of state. And remember, stay till the end. I'm going to tell you what state I would be moving to. So let's go on to the next one. Here's one. I think we're at number five. It's crowded. You go to the beach, it's packed. You go to Walmart, it's packed. You go to Publix, which is a supermarket, it's packed. You go on a bike path, it's packed. It's so crowded in Florida right now. And... Yes, there's people moving out of Florida, but so many people moved in that we actually surpassed the population of New York. That's how many people moved here during the pandemic. And if you wanna go and just get away from everybody, it's almost impossible. Like when we wanna go swimming, we don't go to the beach anymore because you're five feet away from somebody else and they're playing their music. It's just like, it just doesn't feel like there's any peace anywhere. And I know it sounds like I'm whining a lot, but these are some of the reasons why I wouldn't have picked Florida because I came here from New York to get away from the crowds in New Hampshire. So I was used to, I grew up in New York in the five boroughs and Long Island and I know crowds, so it's not that. But sometimes you just want relaxation. So now, if we want to hit a beach or a sandbar, we take the boat. And now we go to remote areas that it's only accessible by boat. And we go there and we go swimming. And that's one way of getting, getting away from everybody. But it doesn't mean that everybody has that option to do. So crowds is my number five reason why I probably wouldn't pick Florida again. Here's number six, and don't laugh, heat. I know Florida's always been hot. 
okay? Don't get me wrong. I know in 2003, you know, in 2008, when I was here, and it was hot, okay? But for some reason, I don't know if it's my age, you know, because now that I'm older, or the climate is really changing, but it is hot. Like right now, the reason why I'm recording inside, I was I said, you know what? I'll go for a walk and I'll record this because there's no script. I, I'm just telling you right off the bat, you know, what this thing is. And, but it's 98 degrees outside with humidity. So it's, it's like a sauna, it's like punishment. And it, I know, you know, during the summer months and September, whatever, it's, 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 it's hot, but it just feels like it's a constant, constant battle now with heat. And the weird thing about the heat is, in, where I live in Florida, near the Tampa area, Every afternoon, five, six years ago, in like around 3 p.m., it would rain for like 30, 40 minutes. I'm not talking about a little bit of rain. It would rain sideways. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It, it would rain sideways. And then it would cool things down a little bit, and you could see the steam coming off the streets. It was crazy. But that hasn't been happening for the last four, five years. The, the afternoon storms, you know, once in a while, yes, we'll get an afternoon storms, but now it's just constant heat and sun. I know it's called the sunshine stay for a reason, but come on, I, I, would, I don't mind a little bit of clouds too and the heat being a little lower because the heat index, we have heat advisories every other day now. It's nuts. Let's go on to the next one. Here's one that I knew what I was getting into when I moved to Florida but I do miss it. Lack of seasons. I'm not a fan of New York winters or New Hampshire. It gets dark way too early. It gets dark like, you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock it feels like, in, you know, in New Hampshire. And it's gray and cloudy and I don't see the sun. So I don't miss the winter. But I do miss the spring and fall, especially the fall, the little crispness. Here in Tampa, yeah, it goes down to the 50s, 40s on occasion and stuff, but it doesn't have the same feel as the Northeast did and New York did during the fall, you know, I've seen the fall foliage and everything. So I could say one of the things that I regret, and if I was moving to a new place, I would want to have the four seasons, but I would want a mild winter. Tell me what you guys think on this one. I do miss the four seasons, but not to the extreme winters. Like when I lived down in Wyoming, that was way, way too extreme of a winter. And I felt like, you know, fall lasted a week. That's what it felt like. So the four seasons is one of the reasons why if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have moved to Florida. Here's, here's another one that I knew what I was getting into when I moved to Florida is hurricanes. So they just seem like they're more constant, okay? It's, yeah, we still always talk about hurricanes and we're like, eh, it won't hit us, don't worry about it, or it'll be category one, or we'll just get the back end of the hurricane and some stuff, but it feels like it's a more prominent problem when it comes to Florida. So we used to always talk about hurricanes, don't get me wrong, when I moved here, we always talked about hurricanes, but now it feels like a constant, constant thing. So much that the state, I think once or twice a year, they're like, hey, if you're buying for a weekend or whatever, we won't charge any sales tax on any hurricane preparation stuff, which is great, but these hurricanes feel like they're getting stronger and more frequent than they ever did before. And, it, you know, when people say, oh, you're not going to get hit by a hurricane, everybody in Florida could get hit by a hurricane. But the problem is right now, it's not, it's not if you're going to get hit, it's when you're going to get hit. Let me just tell you that one. They're getting more and more devastating. They are. And... You know, me being, you know, having a property on the water and the boats and just everything. 
it's like a little nagging thing saying, okay, am I going to get hit by a hurricane this week? You know, like they have the big hurricane down, they have a hurricane in the Gulf now. It's heading towards Texas. But it's stressed that when I was moving down here to Florida, maybe I'd be like, you know what? I don't want to deal with the hurricanes. You know, like one or two I could deal with, but if it's a constant problem, and this particular year in 2024, they said it's going to be an overactive season. And they weren't kidding. The season just started, and it was already a hurricane that turned into a Cat 5. Yeah, it's being downgraded now, but come on. We usually don't start seeing stuff until, like, what, August, September? So hurricanes is becoming an issue that if I knew that we're always talking about hurricanes, maybe I wouldn't have moved to Florida. Here's number eight. So basically, one of the things that we enjoy doing is the theme parks, okay? Busch Gardens, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, all that stuff. And back then, we're not, we're not a big Disney family, but, you know, we like going and everything. And it was, it was affordable. And we're like, hey, you know what? It would be so cool. We live in Orlando. And, I mean, we live in Tampa, but, but we could drive to Orlando. And it will take us like an hour and 15, an hour and a half to get there, depending on traffic. But now, these days, it's so expensive to get into the parks. Even if you're a Florida resident, the traffic is so bad, it takes forever to get there now. And if you do manage to get there and get into the park, it's so crowded that, you know, we went a few times to the park. And we were lucky after spending eight hours there to get on three rides. You know, sitting online for like an hour and a half just to ride something for two minutes or three minutes, whatever long it takes, is a ridiculous amount of time. And it's so expensive and it's hot. And it's just the enjoyment of going to park. We haven't been to a park in over a year now because it's just not fun anymore. It feels like a chore. So, that's another reason. Let me give you one more. A lot of people are going to disagree with this one. But I think it's because of the crowds. And I think because we're like a culture state. Because people from New York, California, New Jersey, Connecticut, everybody moving in here. But I just feel that one of the reasons why I moved down here was for Southern hospitality. Okay? And I, when I go to Savannah, Georgia, or places like that, I feel like I still see it and feel it. But I think that people in certain areas of, not everybody, okay? I don't need everybody jumping on me on this one. But I just feel that because of the crowds and the heat and just everything just being commercialized and everything, I just don't feel that people are as friendly as they used to be in Florida. You know, one of the things in New York, and I might get comments on this one, but hey, I'm from New York. You know, it wasn't like, sometimes it's not the nicest people in New York, you know, being courteous and friendly. Like, when I was going from New York to like Wyoming, it's like night and day of, you know, friendliness. And I feel in Florida, it's just not there anymore. And as the time goes by, it disappears more and more and more. So that's another one. I won't hop on, you know, harp on it, but it's just one of my things. Let's go to the last one, and then let me tell you the state I would move to. Okay, the tenth reason why I would definitely, definitely not move to Florida if I had to do it in 2024 is the real estate cost. The prices in Florida got ridiculous ridiculously high ridiculous i'm not even trying to exaggerate it i think the homes in florida i inspect them every day so i just think they're overvalued by like 30 percent or 40 percent and i just think that people are moving down here you know like somebody moving from new york or california and moving to florida might be like oh wow you know like Oh, this house is not expensive, you know. Um, oh, it's nine hundred thousand dollars. That's a deal, you know, from where they come from and everything. But 
the locals that grew up in Florida or people that moved like me that moved here a long time ago and we moved here because we're like hey let's sell here because the houses are really really expensive and the taxes in New Hampshire too are ridiculous stupid but let's move to Florida it's more affordable housing and it was but that's not the case anymore that houses got I don't see them going down until something major happens and I think the thing that's going to be like major that's happening is going to be insurance cost or a hurricane or basically people are like it's just going to have enough to say we just can't afford it anymore because it just feels like Florida is just another New York you know so I always call Florida South New York you know and it's just it's, you can't afford a house the average person can't afford a house in Florida and people used to just come down here to Florida to be able to afford houses they in, in when I lived on Long Island they used to have these big thing at the Coliseum it's called Nassau Coliseum and it would be all the Florida builders and Florida realtors coming down here saying hey come down to Florida it's affordable leave New York so everybody from New York flocked to Florida and bought second homes or second or third homes and it was so affordable those days are over with. and starter homes in Florida it's really even hard to find a starter home so that's my top 10 reasons why you know I would not move to Florida in 2024 if I had to do it again but now let me explain the state I will go to if I had to do it over again this is the state okay the state that I would move to if I was moving out of New York or New Hampshire in 2024 would be Tennessee and let me explain why I wouldn't pick Florida I would pick Tennessee and I won't go into all the details but I wrote some I wrote some things down low cost of living okay lower than Florida no income tax just like Florida vibrant music scene so basically you know I'm getting into a little bit of country music and I like it but they, they have a, I went to Tennessee and they have a really vibrant music scene so for me I like that you know um, great food the, the cuisine there was great when I go to Tennessee for some reason I'm, I just think the food is better than Florida you know the property taxes are reasonable there they're not compared to to Florida um, moderate climate so you have the four seasons but you know not as extreme as the Northeast which is really really important um, it's a business friendly environment and I could keep going and I'll probably do a video on Tennessee but Tennessee is why the state that I would pick if I had to move to a place in 2024 and not Florida that's today's video do me a favor consider subscribing Give this a, a video a thumbs up and share it. It's greatly appreciated. And watch this next video. It's either here or here. But it's. I think you'll be interested in this one too. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you and have a great day.